Hi guys, Omar here for another Fuji X-T20 video. I'm here with Cap and we're going to school today, people. We're going to school. This video is for beginners, people new to the Fuji system, uh, anyone who just got the camera and is confused about how to shoot with it. If you're a more advanced user or you're coming from another Fuji camera, then skip it, skip it. So the Fuji X-T20 has the following modes, auto, program, aperture priority, shutter priority, and manual. So why are there different modes on your camera? Well, your camera is totally always thinking about exposure. There's a little exposure needle on your camera. And if you're in an auto mode, your camera is trying to get that needle right in the middle. It's doing anything it can to give you what's called a proper exposure or a correct exposure. Now, if you're very new to photography, these are the basics of, of photography. If you have your camera for the first time and you want to start learning a little bit more, this is for you. So you, your camera and you control exposure with three things, aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. The aperture is the opening that's on your lens. Each lens has the ability to sort of open very wide, and we give that a number like 2.8. It's also called an f-stop, by the way, or f8 or f22. Now what's confusing for beginners is the bigger the number is of the f-stop, the smaller the opening, okay? But if you think of them like fractions, like one half, uh, one eighth, and one twenty-second, uh, that might help you a little bit. Okay, let's talk about shutter speed. So shutter speed is how long your sensor is exposed to light. So this is your sensor, and this is what absorbs the light to actually take your picture. So it's covered most of the time. There's a shutter curtain over it, and basically, uh, when you set your, let's say you're taking a picture of this waterfall, if you set your your shutter speed for two seconds, so the shutter will open up, expose, one, one thousand, two, one thousand, and then it'll completely close that shutter and the picture is taken. If you have a very high shutter speed, like one four thousandth of a second, then the, your shutter um, basically will open and close really quick. And so you kind of capture a little bit of light there, okay? And the third one you can think about is ISO. ISO is how sensitive your sensor is to absorbing light. So if you're in a very bright, bright area, you want a low ISO, like ISO 200. Now you can go to ISO 100. I put 200 up there because Fuji's native ISO is 200. And if it's a little dark, you may want to go up to a higher ISO, like ISO 6400. So your camera modes are thinking about these three exposure settings, but they work in different ways. If you're in auto mode, the camera does all three for you. If you're on manual mode, you do all three, okay? Now there's a catch. In manual mode, you can actually take care of aperture and shutter, and you can decide, you know what? I want the camera to take care of ISO in the background for me, because I don't care if it goes from 200 to 1600. I don't care which ISO it picks. So you can set an auto ISO and still be in manual. Or you can be a control freak and totally say, you know what, I'm gonna pick my ISO specifically for the situation. Maybe you don't want a lot of grain, so you want 200, 400. Or maybe you know that you don't wanna go over a certain ISO, like 3200, so you could just dial that in, okay? Now in aperture priority mode, the, the, uh, you decide which aperture you want. So you set the camera, let's say for example, to F4. The camera then decides which shutter speed goes with F4 to give you a proper exposure. That's aperture priority mode. In shutter priority mode, you pick the shutter speed you want, like 250, 1 250th of a second, and the camera decides what aperture, what opening of the lens it's gonna choose. If you notice, the numbers are totally the same. F4, uh, 125th, sorry, 250th. <laughs> It just depends which mode you're in, okay? Whatever your thinking is. In program mode, the camera actually decides the two. It decides what aperture you want and what shutter speed you want. But you, in program mode, have like the power to totally switch with com to switch the combo. You can actually make the combo be uh, f8 to 160th. You actually, with a dial, can switch out what you want the combo to be, okay? to give you the proper exposure. Now, if you're coming from another camera system like Canon or Nikon, you're used to picking your uh, modes with a wheel. 
So if you're on auto mode on Canon, it's a, like a green square. Sorry, that's a rectangle. Um, and then the other modes, manual, aperture priority, uh, shutter priority. On Canon, it's uh, TV on S for, for Nikon. And program is P mode. Okay, <laughs> P mode. And then the other, uh, these like pictures are called creative modes. So they're kind of like beginner sort of, uh, you want the camera to take care of everything. Now the Fuji does have creative modes as well, and I'll show you how to use those. So if you notice here on the Canon, we have in program mode, we have an aperture and a shutter speed set, and we can actually switch the combinations between the two. On the Fuji system, there are no dials that switch the modes. Instead, you pick your modes by picking what you want the aperture, shutter speed, and ISO to do. For example, on a lens, the aperture can be switched with an aperture ring. Now, some lenses have an aperture ring for the Fuji system, some don't. If you have an aperture ring, you can switch the aperture with the ring that's on the lens. If there is no aperture ring, you'll have to use a dial. There's an, on the X-T2, there's an ISO dial. You can dial in your ISO, and there's a shutter speed dial. On the X-T20, there is also an aperture ring on your lens and a shutter speed dial, but there is no ISO dial. That you'll have to change using the menu system, the quick menu, or a special button that you've chosen. Let's go over changing the modes on your Fuji. Auto mode. To be in full automatic, if you want to hand the camera over to anyone, you just have to make sure this is switched to auto. All right, guys, here we have cap modeling for us. Awesome. And we just switched it to auto mode. And if you look at the bottom here, you'll see a little auto that's on there. And if I half hold the shutter, the camera's pretty smart. It can find cap there. Awesome. And we got a nice shot of cap. And it tells me the uh, exposure and f-stop at the bottom. So at 30th of a second, f-stop, and it picked an ISO of 800. So great. That's auto mode. Also, when you're in auto mode and you turn this front dial on the X-T20, you have options for preset auto modes, like if it's nighttime, if you're shooting sports, and here the, ca the camera kind of picks the best settings for whatever you tell it to, or you can kind of keep it in this advanced auto and the camera decides, you know, if you're trying to take a picture of something close up, um, it'll give you a little macro setting. To get out of auto mode, just switch off onto this middle dot and now you can shoot in the other modes. Program mode, your lens is switched to the A and that your dial here, your shutter speed dial is set to A and you're officially in program mode. You can see a little P at the bottom that tells you you're in program mode there. And this just means the camera picks, again, the camera picks the f-stop and it picks the shutter speed. Now, the thing that's a little different about program mode over auto mode is ISO. You have a couple of choices to make. So you can pick your ISO um, and it will pick the other two accordingly. For example, if I pick an ISO that's very uh, low, like let's say 200, okay, you notice the camera is picking a slow shutter speed so that the exposure comes out right. Yay! Now it comes out fine because I have a, uh, the camera on a little tripod, but if you were hand holding this and this was a person you were trying to take a picture of, that may be tough to hand hold. Okay, 15th of a second. So you want to speed up that shutter speed there so that you can hold the camera still enough if you want to take a picture of grandma. So what you want to do is you can up your uh, ISO so the camera is a little bit more sensitive to light and that sped up my shutter speed to 60. That's a little easier. But if you kind of want to freeze either people laughing or people moving around, sorry, what you want to do is you actually want a shutter speed that's around the hundreds. Okay, so 125, 150, that should pretty much freeze regular human motion. All right. Um, if you're talking sports or anything like that, you and you're in program mode, you really got to get up your shutter speed, your ISO really high to get shutter speeds that are fast enough. It picks a shutter speed and an aperture, but you can actually make choices. If you turn the dial here, you can change the combinations. And if you look down here, you can see them switching. Check aperture priority mode. For aperture priority mode, just make sure your shutter dial is on A and that you switch this to boop, that weird little aperture symbol. 
and now you're in aperture priority mode. Okay, now we're in aperture priority mode. In this mode, you pick the aperture and the camera picture shutter speed. Now all you need to do is use your, if your lens comes with an aperture ring, you just need to turn it to change your aperture. If your lens does not come with an aperture ring, you could probably change your aperture using one of the dials, the back or the front, okay? That could be configured in the menu, by the way, which one you want to be the aperture. If you do have a lens with a ring, uh, you can turn it and see what happens to the shutter speed, okay? So let's say, for example, we're taking a picture of Cap here. We focus on his sleeve. Right now I have an aperture of 5.0. Oh. Let's go to 5.6, and the camera picked the shutter speed for me, and we're totally cool, okay? So why would you want to change your aperture? Well, most photographers uh, think aperture first, because aperture tells you how much you want in focus. Do you want to see everything in the background, or you just want to see cap? If I want to see everything in the background, I think aperture first, and I'm like, you know what? Let me go to f11 or f16. I'm going to switch my lens to f16. Just be careful. Right now I'm at 15th of a second to get a good exposure. And that might be kind of slow to hand hold. You could probably do it though with an image stabilization lens. So here we go. We're going to take a picture. Let's make sure we focus on cap here. Yep. Focused on cap. Just play that back. Make sure cap is in focus. Yeah, he's totally in focus but so is that little frame back there, okay? So if you want things all in focus, uh, you use a high, uh, an aperture, or high number aperture, okay? So now I'm gonna go down to boop, the smallest this is gonna go. The smallest this is gonna go is 3.2, and let's take a picture of Cap, let's focus there. You focus, you focus, buddy? And let's look at that picture and compare the two. So there's Cappy Cap. The frame, just check out the frame in the back. That's the F16. There's the, so you have a little bit more creative control if you're shooting with aperture priority because you think aperture first. You're like, you know, I don't wanna see all that junk in the background. Let me change my aperture to 2.8 or four. And it always depends on what lens you have. If you have a lens that goes to 1.4, well, you get really blurry backgrounds, okay? So that's why you think aperture first. Check. Shutter priority mode. For shutter priority mode, just make sure that your lens is set to A for automatic aperture. And now if you switch this off A, you're in shutter priority mode. That means you're choosing what shutter speed you want and the lens is picking the aperture. Okay, so now we're in shutter priority mode. You'll see a little S in the corner. And for this one, you can actually, if you notice, if I, if I switch this, I'll pick my shutter speed and the aperture changes around, okay, on the lens. So uh, I rarely use shutter priority because I kind of shoot more manual if I'm thinking. But let's say that you were practicing your panning, like panning is when you, you know, you follow like a bicycle. Uh, you can just decide, hey, you know what? I'm gonna practice my panning at 15th of a second to see if I'm good at it. Now, if you notice the, the camera picked at F22 and it's red, that means that's not good. Red ain't good, blue good, red ain't good. Now that means that the camera has reached a limit. So whoop, now it's white. That means that the, it will work. F22 was not good enough, uh, closed down enough for that exposure. It would have been too bright. So now I'm at 15th of a second and I picked an ISO or I could leave it on auto. Let's just leave it on auto for now. Auto one, oops. And uh, let's see what it did for, there we go. 15th of a second and the camera picked 3.2 for our um, aperture, okay? Now, uh, if you change your ISO around, oh, we're about to lose battery, look at that. Oh my gosh. It's getting exciting, people. Dun dun. Will the battery die before we finish this video? Great, so it picked the shutter speed. You can change your shutter speed around. Let's say uh, we're gonna get an action shot again. Uh, and now there's red again, look, 2.8. Not good, it's gonna come out dark. 
Now we can't make the lens go any lower than 2.8. So what we're gonna have to do is mess with our ISO. We can actually go to our auto three because I set my auto three to be gangsta right there. It goes super high. So now the picture will come out uh, exposed well. Check. For manual mode, just make sure that your shutter speed is dial is off A. You can be in any of these shutter speeds and then switch your lens off A and make sure it's in the little aperture symbol. And now you're in manual mode. Okay, so now we're in manual mode. Manual mode, you'll notice a little M in the corner there. And in manual mode, you have full control over all the dials. And what's great is you actually see a preview of the picture you're gonna get. So let's just say that you're taking a portrait of Cap and you want, you know, you know your shutter speed, you wanna be at 125. Well, then you gotta deal with the other two to make sure that the picture's exposed well. You are deciding what you want based on the situation. Maybe there's a waterfall behind Cap and you want, to, you want it to come out blurry and you tell Cap, stay still, Cap, you better not move. Um, or maybe there's cool cars like going behind him. Uh, so you tell him to stay still and you're going to take a picture at one second. Okay, But you better take care of all three. That's why shooting in manual is fun because you can actually set up your shot without having the camera do anything. Um, so I'm going to shoot for a second. And I want to make sure, make sure my ISO is kind of low. Uh, and I'm going to turn my aperture to that. So he's exposed well. And now my shutter speed is where I want it. It's going to be two seconds. Now you could also do that in shutter priority, sure. But as you start shooting manual, you're going to get really good at switching the things based on what you're thinking. Check. So there you have it, guys. Stay still. There you have it, another Fuji X-T20 video. I hope you found that useful, uh, especially you beginners out there. This one was for you. Um, so leave a comment or a question below, and I'll see you guys next time. Happy St. Patrick's Day.